Hey, it is time to huddle up. Bob Slovak here. I've got the consummate pro, Jason Alexander. He's on remote right now. Jason, how you doing, buddy? Wonderful, Bob. We're recovering here at the house. A little COVID scare, but I uh, feel much better today. Ready to huddle up. Here with all the things. All right, we're going to do it. I hope everybody had a happy new year. The sports world, it continues to roll on. Let's talk, start with the Rockets because – we know Jason has a vested interest in the Rockets. Still stuck on ten wins. They're ten and twenty-eight now, uh, but they they got they're getting their young players back. Let's start with a little bit of discipline. Kevin Porter Jr., Christian Wood, both suspended for a game. Kevin Porter Jr. got into some kind of shouting match with the coaches in the locker room, but he came out yesterday and apologized. He owned up to it. Says I'm moving on. I'm ready to play. Hey, got young players, Jason. It's going to happen. Well, you got to hold the rope, and that's what we've done. That, that's what the coaches have done, which I love. And they're going to know what's right, what's wrong, and what to do. And I think it's very, very rare in professional sports these days with certain franchises that they, they let those players tug on it a little too much. So uh, kudos to the Rockets coaching staff, and I expect that that's going to create at least one or two wins here in the next two weeks for that overtotal box. <laughs> it's 26, stuck on 10, so they need 17 wins. We, we did a little quick math a while ago. They – Need to go 17 and 27? Is that what we came up with? We came up with a clean win. We just need 16 for a push. But let me tell you, <laughs> I, you know, we, we talked about this is a tough stretch. It's a tough stretch here over the next two or three weeks. But if we can just pick off one or two wins, I think that'd be fantastic. We got a winnable game tonight against Washington. All right, they do. They definitely do. Texans uh, hosting the Titans to close out the season. Texans 4 and 13. The Titans are coming to town with a lot to play for, that number one seed in the AFC. So I'm expecting the Titans just, you know, put the pedal down. What do you think? I think they're going to try to. I've just never been – I think Tennessee has one of the best teams in the NFL. I really do. They're going to be a playoff contender. You saw Derrick Henry has been working out at the facility all week. He's going to be a full go for the playoffs. So look out for Tennessee in the playoffs. But then, look, Davis Mills has a lot to play for this Sunday as well. I think this is going to be his preview for a bigger look next year. And, the, hey, getting ten and a half. The Texans have remained competitive on most of these games, especially at home. So we'll uh, we'll see what the old, the old Houston Texans have to offer this Sunday afternoon. Yeah, and Derrick Henry is supposed to be back, supposed to practice this week and, and possibly play in the game. Uh, Deontay Foreman's done an incredible job, but you know, as his replacement. So, man, Tennessee with Derrick Henry back, especially in the playoffs, they are going to be tough. If, to if Derrick Henry comes back, that line's going to change. So we're not betting this to a little closer to kickoff. <laughs> He's worth about three or four more points for the Texans side. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, real quick, we're going to talk more with Sean Pendergast from Sports Radio 610 about Deshaun Watson and that saga there. But the Texans, they're going to trade him. It's who they trade him to is the big, the big difference here. Uh, what, are you, what are you seeing? What do you think, Jason? Well, the no-trade clause is, is uh, hanging over everybody's head and obviously uh, getting him cleared of everything and ready to go. So, I, you know, he's going to wave that. Right now it's just Miami, so we'll talk to Sean a little bit more in detail, like I said, coming up. But, you know, the Jets, Giants, Carolina – I think Cleveland, Pittsburgh, there's a lot of teams that are going to be in the market. They're one player away, and it's that quarterback position. So Deshaun's going to be looking pretty sparkly here in the offseason. <laughs> he is. It's going to be uh, interesting to see how it pans out. Hey, college hoops real quick, because we're really really getting into the meat of the schedule now. The, the yeah. Cougars 12-2, and two, they've lost a couple of their main players. Uh, Marcus Sasser out with a foot injury for the season. Traymond Mark out with a shoulder injury. Young guys like Ramon Walker, who played at Shadow Creek. I actually got to call one of his games last season. He's a phenomenal player, unbelievable shooter, but he's learned defense under Kelvin Sampson, uh, and, and they won a game at Temple where they didn't have the full roster. So I like I like, I like, like their makeup, and we know Coach Sampson's going to have them ready to play once we get into February and March. I mean, it's Coach Sampson. I think he's the best coach in the country. I really do, and especially with a couple of these big guns going out. They're continuing to win, and their two losses, what I think were a combined three, four points. So yeah. they, have a, they have a chance to be undefeated right now. So look out for the coup. This next man up, of course, down there at the University of Houston. I don't expect nothing but big things. All right, uh, we are going to be back here on Huddle Up. Sean Pendergast, one of our favorite guests, he loves to break it down. We got some, we're going to cross off everything: Texans, Rockets, NFL, even the the new mascot of the Washington Football Team. That, that's really fun to talk to him about. So stick with us here on Huddle Up. Bob Slovak, the Consumer Pro, Jason Alexander. Hey, pros picks coming up later as well. We'll be back with more Huddle Up right after this. Okay, team, look, calling a twenty second timeout to give you a hot take from the consummate pro on why everybody needs their own private golf cart. Whether it's cruising around the neighborhood with a beverage of choice, living in a gated community, a vacation home, the golf course, and at the end of the day, chicks just dig it. 
Come down to Conroe Golf Cars, and oh my goodness, look here. We've got City Councilman, City Councilman Kurt Maddox, here to tell us a little bit more about it. Well, hey, Jason, my fellow Lumberjack. Hey, not only am I the City Councilman, I'm also VP of Conroe Golf Cars. We've been here since 1974, and glad to have you. We sell them, we rent them, we build them, so we can do whatever you want. Everybody walks in here and says, hey, let me see your new car, your used car product. I said, well, these are all our used cars. So we start from the ground up, Jason. We, we take the cars in on trade, clean them up, put new batteries, lift them, do whatever. We call it a little cocktail cart or just a fun cart, recreational cart. So you can either buy it, rent it, or do whatever you want. Kurt, I love it, and I'm going to tell you what. Listen to Kurt Maddox and the Consumer Pro. Come out and visit us here at Conroe Golf Cars today. All right, welcome back to Huddle Up. Uh, we are joined by Sean Pendergast, our good friend from Sports Radio 610. Sean, thanks for joining us here on Huddle Up. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Happy New Year, fellas. It's good to talk to you. Uh, good, All right, big 22. Huh? Good to talk to yeah. you as well. Hey, let's start with the Texans. Uh, you know, they're going to finish off the season against the Titans. <laughs> you know, the Titans, they want to hang on to that number one seat. So what do you think the Texans are going to try to pull out this Sunday, like Sean? Well, I mean, I think, look, the, the Texans, as we've seen over the course of the, the last handful of weeks of the season, they've not folded up the tents at all. They're still not a very good football team, but they're still putting forth, I think, pretty good effort, you know, just in terms of the, the energy they're putting forth into, into winning and, and, and trying to still, I think, find some things out. You know, I think um, they, they want to win the football game, but I think more than anything else, to me, this is the, the last chance for Davis Mills to put something on film heading into the offseason that says, I can be the starter for this team in, in week one of 2022. So I think they're trying to win the game, but I think if you're trying to come away with, I think trying to come away with some clarity head, and some momentum too, heading into the offseason is, is the biggest thing. Davis Mills, we don't know who's going to be reactivated still. They've got a few guys on the COVID list that I think I'd still like to see another game. Where I'd like to see Titus Howard to tackle for one more game before the season's over. Um, I'd like to get one more look at Lonnie Johnson. I can't believe I'm, those words Ooh. are coming out of my mouth, but I think just for the sake of, clarity and evaluation i'd like to see one more game of lonnie johnson so i think it's 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 a weird dynamic it's almost like a it's almost like a fourth preseason game that you're trying to go win and beat a division rival where the stakes are very very high for the tennessee titans well you know do you like the the, the game plan nick casario has put in place I, we're expecting another a ton of turnover next next season david cully looks like he's coming back do you like the direction they're taking because i've always said you got to hit rock bottom before you can go up yeah, I, well, I don't know there were many directions they could take other than the one they've taken. You know, the, the only direction, especially once Deshaun Watson requested a trade, the only direction then was to tear it down to the studs and start to rebuild again. So I guess the question becomes, you know, there's different ways to tear it down. Could they have just used all of their draft picks instead of maneuvering to only pick five guys last year? Could they have picked up a bunch of day three picks and brought in a bunch of undrafted free agents and gone super young with this team? Or... Could they do what they did, which is draft a few guys, have very few undrafted free agents, but bring in a lot of veterans on short-term deals that aren't mauling your salary cap and, and, and try to find a few diamonds in the rough that you want to keep around for a few years. I'm fine with the way Nick Casario decided to do it. Uh, I think the thing, you know, I, he's made some mistakes. There's no question. None of them are catastrophic because he hasn't taken any big swings yet. To screw up. Uh, he hasn't given out a huge contract like Bill O'Brien was handing out like Halloween candy. He, he hasn't he hasn't had a chance to 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 do that yet, really. Um, so he's made some small mistakes, but I think the things that have me most excited, guys, uh, is the fact that it looks like it looks like he's gone five for five on these rookies that he drafted. Yeah. Not that any of them are going to be world beaters or Pro Bowlers, but uh, I think they're all playing over what their draft slot was, right? Yeah. And and I think I, I think the fact that he's he he's been cognizant enough of the big picture to know that we got to clean up this salary cap hell that Bill O'Brien left behind. The only thing left to do now is trade Deshaun Watson. And really, whether or not that happens is kind of out of his hands. Once it's allowed to happen, once the legal situation plays itself out, assuming that it plays itself out in a way that makes Deshaun tradable, 
that'll be what Nick Casario is ultimately going to be judged by in the short term here. What do you get back for Deshaun Watson? And then the rest will play out over the next year or two. So we, we, we had a, a Deshaun Watson sighting uh, right there around Christmas with his girlfriend, Jilly. Uh, that was interesting, yeah. wasn't it, Sean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, I guess it was her birthday party. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was on Instagram. We were, we were talking about that on our show today, Seth Payne and I were. We actually were talking about that exact post. And we were wondering, like, what happens? Because I, I believe it was in Houston. You know, I think he's in Houston right now. Yeah. Um, and and uh, we were wondering, man, what happens, like, when Deshaun goes out in public? Do people go up to him? Does he Is he affable if they do go up to him? And I think we arrived at the conclusion there's a reason why it was such big news that he showed up on an Instagram story of his girlfriend. Is it the dude is not seen anywhere out in public? Like he's yeah. he's been, I think, appropriately probably for for his his own mental well being. He's he's been a a recluse. But um, you know, I, I think now it's just to the point where we're we're hoping to figure out which cities a need a quarterback and B would be something that would check all the boxes for Deshaun Watson because he has a lot of control in this situation with that no trade clause. Jason, you got anything? Well, I, we talked to this off camera a little bit. I, you know, I look at the Jets. Are they going to put on Zach Wilson yet? Yeah, probably not. Danny Jones with the Giants, a couple of really high first-round picks. Are those two of the franchise, the Giants specifically, are they going to take a shot at if Deshaun? Will Deshaun waive his no-trade clause to play in the Big Apple? So, he's well, got you know, Miami. Yeah, I think I think my, we know Miami's is – Miami's met the – he's got the Deshaun Watson stamp of approval. Carolina, I would think, would be a team that would be on his list just because he's he's very well thought of in that part of the country, and they they want him badly. They were ready to trade for him even yeah. without settling his civil suits, which I think goes to show you how thirsty they are for a quarterback. Jason, you asked me about the New York teams. Reportedly, New, the Jets were a team that Deshaun would have entertained going to last year. So I got to believe that it just, at least purely from a geography and a brand standpoint, that the Giants would check those boxes. It's not like they're both bad franchises. So, you know, it's not like you look at either. Now the Giants may be getting a new head coach and a new GM. So Deshaun is going to want to certainly take a look at, at, at who's put into those spots. I think the Giants would be an ideal trade partner for the Texans if Deshaun would entertain going there. They right now, if the season were to end this week or end today, still got one more week to go. But this, with only one more week, this stuff is, is, is pretty set in stone. But yeah, the Giants right now have the fifth and the eighth pick in the draft because they've got Chicago's pick right. from the Justin Fields trade. That would be, I mean, can you imagine having three of the top eight picks <laughs> in, in the draft if you're the Houston Texans, if you do a Deshaun trade? So I think, I think the New York teams are interesting. I, I do think that if winning is something that's near the top of Deshaun's criteria, and the fact that he's so hepped up about the Dolphins leads me to believe that winning is not necessarily – all that important. I think he wants to win, but the fact that he was ready to approve a trade to the Dolphins when they were one and seven tells me that he's more about the life than he probably is about the Lombardi trophy. Yeah. But let's just, let, let's just play this for a second. There are four teams that I think come this off season have rosters that are good enough that are a quarterback away from competing to be in the Super Bowl, And these are all teams that have only won seven or eight games this year. I think Denver, I think new Orleans, I think Pittsburgh and I think Cleveland, those are all teams that have quarterback issues that have rosters that I think if you, if you put the quarterback aside, the rest of the roster for all four of those teams are among the 10 best rosters in football. I agree. I, that, yeah. That sounds good. So I think those are teams to watch. I'm going to tell you this, though. Uh, I wonder how much Jilly's going to have a say in it because I don't think Denver, yeah. New Orleans, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, she's going to want to go there. She's going to want to go to Miami or New York. <laughs> I, 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 no, Bob, Bob I, I, I think you're a hundred percent true. I think that, that unfortunately is something that has to be factored in. I mean, I say, unfortunately, like, you know, I wish Deshaun luck wherever he goes, whatever, yeah. unfortunately for the Texans, you know, and it's then the Texans made this bet. They are the ones who gave Deshaun Watson a no trade clause, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. now, now he, now they gave him a no, tra the no, the spirit of a no trade clause is not to do what Deshaun is doing. The spirit of a no trade clause has always been, Hey, I don't want you to trade me, like I, I want to. The spirit of the no trade clause has always been: I want to be here. I don't want you to trade me away from exactly. here. Exactly. This dynamic with Deshaun has has I think has probably made a lot of front offices think about exactly how they word these no trade clauses. Because what Deshaun has unwittingly kind of stumbled into is a way to weaponize the no trade clause against his employer. You know, which is which is you know, and and you use all the weapons that you have at your avail when you're trying to get your desired outcome. He's not doing anything illegal. 
Um, but he certainly has not made, I don't think he's made a lot of fans along the way this last year with the way this has all gone down. No, no. All right, let's. So, uh, wait, last yeah. question on the draft here. And I read yeah. one. So who's your number one? Is it, you know, Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett for me, anybody, any of these draft quarterbacks going to go in the uh, top 10, 12 picks in the draft? Yeah, you're saying my number one quarterback. I think Hutchinson's. I think is going to be the number one pick. You're saying my number one quarterback. 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 Yeah, I, I think. Well, Corral got injured in the bowl game, so right. I think we need to see how that plays out. Um, I, I, I do think Corral, if the injury is something that prevents him from going through the, because he's already announced he's coming out. Right. If the injury is something that prevents him from really being evaluated during the draft process, that's one that gets interesting to me. If you're the Texans and you got a couple of second round picks and you got an extra second from the digital, you draft Corral and you do a little red shirt year with him. But to answer your question, Jason, um, it's not a great class of quarterbacks. I, I think Pickett is the one that's going to go the highest ultimately, and I like Kenny Pickett just fine. Um, the one that really intrigues me is Malik Willis out of Liberty. Agreed. Uh, just because of the, the physical tools, right? You know, he's a kid who started out at Auburn, transferred yeah. to Liberty. So the level of competition that he's gone against since he's really put himself on the map is not the greatest in the world. But he's got a really intriguing toolbox uh, to bring into the NFL. So – I, I think if the Texans do draft a quarterback, I definitely don't want it to be in the first round because I think you're reaching for any of these guys. And if they choose to do one in the second or third round, uh, you know, I, I don't think Malik Willis will be around in the third round. Might be around in the second round, but probably pick it, Malik Willis, and then it's just – it's a really underwhelming classic. It's an underwhelming class of quarterback. This is a very good draft to be able to tell your fans, hey, look, we need to build the rest of the roster yeah, yeah, it works so out. that we can then in 2023 bring in Bryce Young or somebody like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. Right. All right, let's uh, let's move along here. And real quick, I want to talk a little NFL with you, uh, Sean. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. how, how, how ironic, how crazy is it that Aaron Rodgers is going to win the MVP, or he should? Remember the first week of the season when everybody says, Aaron Rodgers looks like he's disinterested. He doesn't even want to play this season. And now we had it's the Saints. Be the they played the Saints. Yeah. That first week, we had the Saints with Jameis Winston, and a <laughs> Rodgers looked so checked out. Yeah. How far yeah. We and now, you know, and I, I saw this week, uh, you know, he went on the Pat Menefee show where he said he just doesn't give a bleep anymore. But yet he just goes out yeah. there and flicks it all over the field. Now he's going to be the MVP. It's amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. He's he's amazing. Yeah, I thought I forgot about that week one. Yeah. James threw like five touchdown passes yes. and had like 105 yards pass. 105 yards pass, yes. Yeah, like it was crazy. And they won 35 to three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is incredible. I, you know, and I, I don't, you know, that there was there was talk today of one of the one of the MVP voters, Hub Arkish, is saying I'm not going to vote for Aaron Rodgers because he's a jerk. <laughs> like okay, that's your criteria. Like it's, the guy's a jerk, so you're not going to vote for him for the MVP. The dude is the MVP. Yeah. Um, so I, so I, there's part of me that kind of roots for Aaron Rodgers because everybody else, he's a heel, and I've always liked the heels. Yeah. When I, you know, I was a Roddy Roddy Piper fan back exactly. in the day. So what can I say? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, a big heel guy. Good, good. So, stuff. I, but he's he's a uh, he's something else, man. Like I, you know, just the physical tools, the arm talent, um, the fact that they've got this number one seed. I, I think it's a really important postseason for Aaron Rodgers. Um, I don't think anybody denies that you can argue he's the most talented quarterback, we've, the most talented quarterback we've ever seen. Not the greatest player, that's Tom Brady, but the most talented. He needs that second Super Bowl, I think, to to really amp up the conversation about where he – he. I think right now he probably sits in that next tier below the Elways and the Bradys and the you know the, the, Peyton, the Peyton Mannings of the world, guys like that. If he gets that second Super Bowl, and especially I'm always impressed with guys that do it – like Brady's done. I mean, you know, Brady's been around forever, but guys that do it either with different teams or with the same team, but with different supporting casts, you know, the, yeah. the first one he won was in 2010. This is going to be in 2021. There's no teammates he's got left to my knowledge on this team that he had back then. I think that's a real sign of greatness when you're doing it with a completely different cast late in your career. Um, so he's, He's remarkable. He would be my MVP. He sure. would get my vote. So you, sure. so you know who's going to be you know what? You know quick shot. You this up. If Baker Mayfield is the quarterback for the for the Green Bay Packers, don't you feel like they're a seven win team? Eight win. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. And, and I think you can. Yes, I mean, I'm not a huge Baker. Certainly, this version of Baker. Right. They're 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 a 500 team. It goes back to what we were just saying about exactly. Cleveland exactly. in that Deshaun conversation, right? I mean, you you conversely, if you put Aaron Rodgers on Cleveland. They're the, they're the runaway number one seed in the AFC. Right. All it takes to be the number one seed in the AFC this year is to be, is to be uh, 12 well, and 5. That's, right? what, you know, that's 13 what 13 and 4. That's what I was going to say. You, you you named off uh, Denver, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, Cleveland for Deshaun. Those four teams are going to be lining up trying to get Rodgers for next season. Lining up, 
<laughs> line up trying to get Rodgers. Yeah. Line up trying to get Russell Wilson. Presumably, if Deshaun's legal situation plays out, lining up to get Deshaun Watson. That's why if you're a Texan fan, I'm sure we got a ton of Texan fans that are watching this, uh, that you need to be rooting for Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson to kiss and make up with whoever is making them angry within their respective organizations. I don't think that's going to happen. Because <laughs> I don't think it is either. But I, I, And there's probably a better chance with Rodgers than there is with Wilson. I think, you know, I, it feels like, the Russell Wilson thing feel this feels like he's at that stage where he just goes somewhere else and they start over there. I think Rodgers, it's gonna be really tough to move on from Rodgers unless he wants out. I think it's gonna be really tough for both sides if they win a Super Bowl to to say Sayonara, see you later. Mm-hmm. Like where's Aaron Rodgers gonna go where he's gonna have a better chance of winning a Super Bowl than the team that just won a Super Bowl? You know, mm-hmm. Green Bay goes on to to win this thing. But if you're a Texan fan, you're rooting for Rodgers and Wilson to both kiss and make up with their teams because it's supply and demand. You know, you're, you're, you're better off being the guy who has the only elite quarterback, the team that has the only elite quarterback on the trade market than being competing with two other teams, two other teams and two other quarterbacks that are older, but have less baggage. Right. Yeah. PR baggage with them, you know? All right. So, Hey, here's a fun NFL question for you, Sean, the Washington football team, they're going to name their new mascot the first week of February. The, the, yeah. the name's being thrown out there. They, they, they all have kind of a, a, a Washington, D.C. Uh, theme to them. Commanders, Admirals, Armada. My favorite, though, Sentinels, because you know where that comes from, Sean. The Washington Sentinels, Sentinels from the replacements with Shane Falco at quarterback. So I'm pulling, oh, for, the, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pulling for the Sentinels to be the – Washington football team's new mascot. I forgot. Okay. Okay. We went through this exercise with John McClain today, and I didn't want to say anything because I'm like, I should know why the Sentinels made it this far. <laughs> yeah. And I love the movie The Replacement. It's awesome. I have forgotten that. I have forgotten that. that you're right. Because the, cause the producers of The Replacements, you know, whoever produced whatever movie house produced that movie was not probably uh, – probably either didn't have enough money to pony up and get the rights to all the NFL logos or the NFL was like, so wait a second, you're going to do, you're going to do a movie about scabs going over the, uh, going over the picket line. Uh, yes, Bob, now I'm rooting for the set. Oh, I, I, was, I was rooting for red hogs just because yeah. that's got all kinds of marketing opportunities and, and all sorts of fun events in the parking lot that you could do with uh, the, the, you know, the red hogs, you know what? Whether I... it's with actual, Actual red hogs or with that, you know, overweight fans. Yeah. Um, if, it's a, uh, if it's the Sentinels, though, I can see Keanu Reeves out there for the t- coin toss in the opening game. A hun- dude, 100%. <laughs> bring back Hackman. you got to bring back Gene Hackman. <laughs> Hackman. Yeah. Oh, Hackman. John Favreau was yeah. on the oh, team. Yes, he was. He was the linebacker. Favreau, remember uh, the, guy, the guy who played Roy in the office was the hearing impaired – uh, yes. a linebacker or tight end or whatever. He was the tight end. Yeah, yeah. So they had the they had the kicker with the gambling problem. Yeah. He was getting beaten up yeah, by was after the game. He was smoking buds. That's right. That's freaking. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have to go oh, look dude. that up and watch that later today. That is too funny. I, hey, if, they, it's, if it's Sentinels, I am ordering a Falco jersey today. Today, <laughs> the day it gets announced, I'm ordering a Falco jersey, baby. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, hey, college football, who you got, uh, Alabama or Georgia next Monday? Alabama, I can't believe Georgia. Maybe, may, and I like to gamble, so I, maybe I'm thinking totally square here. I was shocked that Georgia was installed as a three-point yeah. favorite in this game. I saw, but yeah. maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment. I mean, we're only two games removed from Alabama needing a gaff by Auburn managing the clock to yeah. eke out an overtime win against Auburn. So maybe, or two games, I guess, removed from it. Now, granted, they were two really impressive games, one of which was actually against Georgia. Um, so maybe Georgia comes back into this game. They will come back into this game, clearly, obviously, with a chip on their shoulder, yeah. knowing what Alabama did to them. At the end of the day, it's just it's really tough for me to trust Stetson Bennett at quarterback for Georgia uh, in this game. You know, I, I just have a really hard time picturing him going against an Alabama. And I know this isn't like, a, a typical it's a really good Alabama defense I mean it's with a ton of talent yeah. yeah it's not like five-star Nick Saban typical Alabama defense right. very very good but I think it's good enough to shut down Stetson Bennett I I'm just looking I'm looking for I'm taking Alabama to answer your question certainly I'm going to take the field goal and just I'll roll with Nick Saban as an underdog all yeah. day long all day long yeah I um it. so and that who knows what that line's going to do I haven't even looked at it the last couple of days I just know it opened at Alabama plus three um but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward. To, 
even though it's two SEC schools going against each other, uh, I'm, I'm very much uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to the spectacle, looking forward to the game. OK. Uh, all right. So uh, that that that's going to be fun to watch next Monday night. Yeah. I got to ask you about the Rockets. No, not so much how they're playing. And they've had some drama with the young guys getting mad. And then Kevin Porter Jr. apologized and everything. I want to talk about the win total because that's a big, big topic here on Huddle Up. Jason's got the over at 26. They've been stuck mm-hmm. on 10. You, you you know the gambling world. Are they going to be able to win 17 more games? Wow. Ooh, that's – man, that is uh, that is tricky, you know, because <laughs> chances are ch- – what are they, 10 and what? Like how many games uh, 10, are they? 10, they have, 10 and 28. 10 and 25? 10 and 28 10, now. 10 and 28. So they've yep. got – so it's 38. So they've got quick math. Where they've got 44 40, games 40, left. So they got to go 17 and 27. Oh, we wow. were after our win streak, John at Pendergast. After our win streak, I was telling everybody how right I was, and now yeah. we're going the other way here for a bit. So it's becoming more tough as the as yeah. the power. Yeah, J- you know, J- Jason. Here's the thing, and and I and Jason can tell I'm like Bob. I'm ready to talk to him. Like I'm I'm putting my arm around him. I'm about to give him some bad news. <laughs> Jason, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, they were really, really good with – and I'm not saying there's a direct correlation, but they were really, really good when Jalen Green was – They were. Line. They were, yeah. You know, and, and, and Jalen Green is, is a good player, and he's going to be a good player. He's got the potential to be a great player. But for whatever yeah. reason, things were working better offensively. The ball was moving a little bit more. The ball moved more. Can you guys yeah. see it? The ball moved more. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so it got to happen to Jalen, but after this month, we had a tough month coming. Just a little tweak of the ankle you, for two weeks. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, you, 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 you might need to change your name to Jason Galuli and just go, you know, like go <laughs> go, 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 you, go go blunt force trauma Jalen Green somewhere so you can get that over that over twenty six and a half. But I I think that's you know that's the key is this is always the tough thing about betting overs on on bad teams, especially in the NBA where I think tanking is just much more accepted in the sport than it is in, yeah. in say football. Um, but the tough thing about betting overs on on bad teams, especially in the NBA, is that their motivation is not lined up with your motivation, right? Your motivation is for them to win basketball games. They will pay lip service to winning basketball games, but their motivation this year is to figure out what Jalen Green is, figure out how he meshes with uh, with Kevin Porter Jr., with Alperin Shangoon, with Josh Christopher with Jay Sean Tate, with K.J. Martin. And what are the, all these guys that I just named have in common? They've all been in the league for like three years or less. Most of them have been in the league for three months. So their their goal, unstated goal, is to just evaluate. It's not necessarily to win games. And that, I think that's where you're going to be You're going to be in trouble. And we joke about I do have a bet on that win total for sure. But talking about the Rockets as an organization, I love what they're doing. And I like that too. system that we have. I think we're going about this the right way. I'm way more excited depending on what the Texas is going to do with, with that, with Pitt, yeah. on, I think the Rockets are two years away from being very competitive. I do. I do too. I, I think the Texans, the Texans are in a, they're just a year behind what the Rockets are right, right. now. Like the, the Texans are rebuilding, but they're more like kind of what the Rockets were last, last year. year where, yeah, right. it, you know, and, and almost very similar in so much as it, it crashed on them very quickly. Like with the Rockets, <laughs> They go into last year thinking they got Russell Westbrook and James Harden, and next thing you know, it's February, and neither of them are on the team, and you've lost 17 games in a row or whatever it was at that time. So it all crash-landed very quickly. The parallels are really remarkable when you think about it. Like, it all crash-landed quickly. The And same thing with the, with the Texans, and a lot of that was self-inflicted with the Texans. I mean, Deshaun, you could compare to Westbrook and Harden in terms of wanting out. It's more nuanced than that. But the Texans – was a ton of self-inflicted. They made, Texans made a lot of bad decisions. The Rockets just had a star player that said, "Peace, I'm out of here." But they're in similar they're in similar situations right now. I think once the Texans have a draft this mm-hmm. year, especially if they trade Deshaun and they get multiple first round picks, now all of a sudden you've got the Shangoons and the Greens and the Christophers mm-hmm. and the KPJs. The football equivalents, so, you know, you have, hey, well, look at this. We got Kyle Hamilton and we got Chris Olave. And I mean, I'm just throwing names around. Right. But guy, and hopefully, hopefully from a, an excitement standpoint, guys that fans can get excited about. Oh, I've seen this guy play on Saturdays. I can't wait to see him suit up for the Texans. And with this we know is that unless it's I don't think they're drafting a quarterback. It, pretty much if they're drafting a young player in the first round, chances are these guys are getting on the field. You know, they're going to oh, play. Oh, for sure. 
This yeah, was going to yeah. go through the same evaluation process that the yeah. Rockets do now. I couldn't agree with you more. All right. So yeah, well, the yeah. one the one thing we do know for sure is uh, the Rockets have crossed over at least one big hurdle. Don't you have to listen to the coach? You have to follow the rules and don't get in a shouting match with the coach because it's <laughs> not going to go anywhere. So we crossed that. Hey, we crossed that bridge. Hey, not not when it's John Lucas. <laughs> no, 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 no. We know we know John Lucas very well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Those are words to live by in general, but when it's John Lucas, they're really words to live yeah, by. Yeah, don't do that. All right, hey Sean, thank you so much for joining uh, me and Jason here on Huddle Up, man. We sure appreciate it. Sports Radio six ten every morning. Uh, Sean, how, how many years you been doing that morning show now? Well, the more I, the mornings uh, in mornings with Seth, we're in our it's since uh, July of 2019. So we're in our you know we're coming up on three years in July. But I've been with Six Ten. I just had my eight year anniversary with Six Ten back on New Year's Day. Awesome. And I've been doing radio in town for about 13, 14 years now. So yeah, yeah, my my I was hired. By 6'10", the same day that Bill O'Brien was hired by the Texans. And so you, I, you outlasted, you outlasted, I outlasted Bill O'Brien. Yeah. Hey, well, I, yeah. let, one more thing before I let you go. Does Bill, yeah. does Bill O'Brien end up in the NFL next season somewhere? I'm going to say no. Okay. I, I, the, okay. I think there will be rumors. We already saw – I guess yeah. probably saw the Jacksonville rumors yeah. from this week. Like, I, I think I think Bill is re- – we saw this in his time with the Texans. I think Bill and his camp, his agent, are really good at – inflating yeah. Bill O'Brien. You know, Bill O'Brien at one point was rumored while he was a Texans coach, he might want to go back to college to coach Maryland and this and that. <laughs> I think Bill's really good at creating a Bill O'Brien market. So I think we'll hear his name for some of these. But no, I think I, I – now there's no big college jobs open now. And I guess I bet he's back in Alabama for one more year as so, offensive yeah, coordinator. It sounds yeah. right. It sounds right. All right, Sean, thank you so much again. Sports Radio 610 from 6 to 10, Monday through Friday. You, you be safe, Sean. And uh, we'll be talking to you again soon. Of course, anytime, guys. Really enjoyed it. Appreciate you. All right, more Huddle Up when we come back. All right, team, your favorite pro here reporting live from the club. Now, look, in order to hit a pure golf shot, we have to do three things. We have to assess, strategize, and execute. And I'm going to tell you, the same three things apply if you're in the market for a loan. Woo! And after absolutely piping one lucky for us we have jake snortland here to tell us more about it thanks jason that is correct here at triumph lending we assess strategize and execute and getting our borrowers the best deals possible so feel free to give me a call my number is 832-639-1455 and no matter if you're looking to purchase a home or refinance your current mortgage i can get you the best deal out there today that's the golden trifecta for triumph lending give them a call today all right, it is time now for the most exciting segment of our show every week, the pros picks. He's the pro, Jason Alexander. And, Jason, we got some good games going up here. We're going to start with the big college game next Monday night, Georgia and Alabama. Georgia's favored by two and a half right now. They are favored. Nick said, well, real, real quick before we get into it, we just a little 20-second timeout. How did the old pro do last week? I believe it was five and one. Yeah. Almost had an undefeated week here, so – Hope everybody made a little money. Let's make some more this week. Yes, Georgia, Bama, one of my favorite plays. Everybody's going to talk about Nick Saban. As an underdog, they're going to play him. But I'm telling you, Georgia Bulldogs have the best roster in the country this year outside of the SEC championship game. They have proved it. And Michigan, who I thought was absolutely fantastic, ton of momentum coming into the playoff game, and Georgia made them look like yeah. they kind of weren't ready. And that's Michigan. So look for Georgia. I think Georgia – Puts a staple on this game. How many times? How many times you get a chance to really put it on Nick Saban? Very few. <laughs> and Georgia's got a chance on Monday night. We're riding the Bulldogs. All right, go with the Bulldogs. Texans hosting the Titans, as we mentioned earlier. Double-digit favorite for the <laughs> Texans right now. And you, you, you actually like the Texans in this game. I like the Texans. Tennessee has a lot to play for. So does Houston. I think Houston's played really hard and competitive. We're going to wait till Sunday to bet this line. Derrick Henry, if he plays, this thing could – approach two touchdowns this could get up to around 13 and a half before kickoff but i like the texans to at least keep it within 20 and then we're talking about maybe getting a backdoor cover a late touchdown to lose by around 12 or 13 points 10 and a half i don't like it quite as much but i think this thing's going to move to 13. all right all right cowboys at the uh eagles uh cowboys giving seven points you got a little bit more faith in the cowboys than i do you like the cowboys covering that number we bounced back and forth on Dallas. Obviously, last week, Arizona was our biggest play of the week, and that was easy at AT&T Stadium against Dallas, uh, covering the five and a half, six points. So Dallas, I think, needs a big bounce back game. They've been a good bounce back team. 
Uh, you look, I'm not sold on Philly's defense. If Dallas really wants to get a little momentum going into the playoff, yeah. I think they're going to let it rip, look for Dak down the field a little bit more this week, kind of getting back to what they tried to do against Washington. Dallas has the better roster. If they're in it to win it and, and show up to Philly, I like them winning this game by 10 to 13. Jalen Hurts has played pretty well down the stretch for the Eagles, but the Cowboys' defense, uh, they, they can make it happen. So uh, I will look for the defense from the, the Cowboys to have a big game. Great. Vikings in Chicago uh, at Minnesota. You, you've liked the Vikes all season, and you like them in this season finale. Two and a half. This is our last chance to bet them until next year, so we're going to go <laughs> give Captain Kirk one more go. And, you know, it was just unfortunate last week with the COVID issues. Uh, they had to short Sean Madden and kind of their season-ending loss to Green Bay. I'd love to see Kirk Cousins play in that game. But I think with Mike Zimmer, he'll have those boys ready to go, even with nothing to play for. Minnesota's going to try to finish the season off strong. Cousins will be back. They win this going away against Chicago. All right, sounds good. The final matchup, San Francisco at the Rams. The 49ers giving, getting four and a half in this game. So, and you like San Francisco getting those points. I think they're very evenly matched teams. I like San Francisco's defense just a little bit more. And one team has to win, and one team doesn't have to win, which is the biggest thing here. The Niners have to win to ensure that they get in the postseason. Uh, Garoppolo is going to be back. Even though Trey Lance showed some flashes against the Texans last week, I can see he was very green, and I think you can see that. But they'll get Jimmy Garoppolo back for this week. I expect a tight ball game right around three points either way. We're taking the number four and a half. Bet the Niners. Bet the Niners. I'm not saying they're going to upset Stafford and the Rams, but it's going to be a close ball game. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. That is it for our pros picks. That is it for Huddle Up this week. Jason, you continue to get better. Be back here in the studio with me next week. I want to see you here, buddy. Absolutely. We'll be ready to rock next Wednesday. Let's go 5-0 on the pros picks. And what a deal with Sean Pendergast. He's the absolute best. He was the best. Uh, thanks again to, for Sean, Sports Radio 610, for joining us. I'm Bob Slovak. He's Jason Alexander, the pro. We'll see you next week right here on Huddle Up.